live from the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 5 p.m. Breaking news, heavy rain and downpours are leaving a trail of damage across Southern California. We are seeing flooding, mudslides, even a jet that skidded off the runway at the Burbank Airport. Yes, from the coast to the burn areas, to the deserts, to the mountains, this storm is impacting every part of Southern California. Good evening, everyone. We have live Storm Watch team coverage for you tonight. And our reporters are spread out across Southern California. And we're going to get to meteorologist Evelyn Tapp in just a moment. But first, we're going to go to Tina Patel to find out what's happening in the Inland Empire. Tina. Yeah, there are mandatory evacuation uh, evacuation orders right now in Lake Elsinore, where the Holy Fire burned earlier. One of the reasons why you can see behind me, there is a lot of mud that has come down, flooding intersections and blocking off access for homeowners who didn't get out in time. It sounded like thunder. Mud and debris flowing like a river down this flood channel in Lake Elsinore. Homeowners were surprised by just how quickly the conditions became dangerous. But I was inside listening, and all of a sudden it started coming down, and I was like, uh oh, I think things are going to change. Ashley Sheffield was already ready to evacuate her home. She had packed her car earlier in the day, not wanting to take any chances with her kids. Oh, I can't take their safety, you know, it, lightly. I have to, I have to get out. So. We'll go and hang out for a while, and hopefully it will be a short period of time. Many who live in the Holy Fire burn area say they've been packed for a while, knowing that storms could come at any moment. Most of our stuff is moved out and in storage anyways, so any, anything we have of value is not even in the house. But we just keep to-go bags all over the place, so I keep everything important in bags right by the front door. Still, many thought the rain wouldn't be that big a problem today. That's why schools were in session, forced to let students out early when the storm worsened in the early afternoon. I don't think they should have been in school today. <laughs> I think it's kind of silly. Luckily, there haven't been any reports of injuries, but several streets have flooded. Crews trying to clear the streets now and make sure homeowners can get out before the inevitable next round of storms. And officials say if you got those evacuation orders, please leave. Don't wait. Even though the rain right now is not as heavy as it was earlier in the day, it is still coming down, and there is still a possibility there will be more debris flows as the night goes on. Live in Lake Elsinore, Tina Patel, CBS 2 News. Tina, thanks very much, and here is Evelyn Taft. All right, you guys, we are getting a look at satellite radar, and you are looking at some heavier rain continuing to come in over parts of the IE and snow in the mountains. We've got flash flood warnings, two of them, one just expiring, another one still with us through parts of the Inland Empire. We've gotten reports of debris flows just around 3 p.m. this afternoon in Lake Elsinore Canyon, Canyon 2 burn areas, a very big concern for us. Most of the basin has dried out. Woolsey Fire burn area doing okay. The coast already doing a little better than where we were earlier, but again, Again, the IE in the mountains, that's where the action is. We are looking at widespread heavy rain, especially right there over the IE moving up into the mountains. Big Bear, you'll see along the 10 as we head into Palm Springs, Desert Hot Springs, Beaumont, a lot of the cells starting to push off that direction. We're not in the clear yet, though. We are still expecting that chance of rain to last with us throughout the evening. We're still looking at flash flood watches. We are still looking at winter weather advisories, and that flash flood warning remains in effect through parts of the Inland Empire through 7 o'clock tonight. So still a little ways to go here. I'm going to have the rest of your forecast coming up. Of course, rainfall totals, all of that in just a bit. Back to you guys. All right, and now we go to Santa Ana. This is what parents found when they showed up to pick their kids up at Kennedy Elementary School today. The parking lot was flooded. But luckily, not the school. So classes obviously <laughs> <laughs> continued. Well, CBS2 Orange County reporter Michelle Geely is live with a look at some of the flooding in other parts of Orange County. That was pretty bad, Michelle. It was, and we had a school that had to shut down early here in Orange County. A bit on that in a minute. But look at these cars behind me here. They floated up onto the curb, the back wheels there, not even sitting on the street. That happened when we had a big rainstorm here on Pomona Avenue, and this place turned into an ocean. Oh, no! Water was up to the wheel wells of cars and trucks that dared to move along Pomona Avenue after a massive downpour at noontime in Costa Mesa. 
There was so much rain that cars were barely visible, some floating from parking spots into the middle of the street. Oh yeah, a lot of careless people. They, they just were trying to go right through it like it was nothing. Just it was kind of funny how people just didn't care. Newport Beach got hit hard with several inches of rain in a short period of time. A section of Pacific Coast Highway became a lake. Balboa Island, which is prone to flooding, was soaked. Streets and sidewalks were submerged. City crews pumped water into the bay as quickly as they could, but not fast enough to keep it out of Gunner Gale's basement. He tells me after he shot this video, the pool table disappeared underwater. I just, you could hear it. It sounded like, you know, rapids downstairs. And I was like, uh oh. <laughs> so. Schools out for weather. The headline today at Corona Del Mar Middle and High School after several feet of water flooded the campus. Kids were sent home early. This is Todd Roby's ceramics classroom. He's been using a squeegee to push the water off the floor into the drain. The uh, water just kept rising, and I slowly watched it like creeping in the doors. And next thing I know, it was water everywhere. So. Back here live in Costa Mesa, I want to point out a couple of things, you guys. First of all, we have not seen the owners of either one of these cars that are cattywampus here on Pomona Avenue. And if you look just beyond the roof line of one of those cars, you can see that black mark on the wall. That is how high the water was here, about four and a half feet on Pomona Avenue. There's a lot of condensation on the inside of those cars. I'm sure at one point they were submerged and filled with water. That's the latest live in Costa Mesa. I'm Michelle Geely. Back to you. All right, thanks, Michelle. Now that was in Orange County, but we had problems all over, including uh, the San Fernando Valley. The relentless rain created chaos on the roads. Christy Fajardo is live in Encino with the stories of drivers who had to be rescued there as well. Christy. Yeah, Jeff and Pat, conditions have really improved. In fact, drivers are not having any problem going down the street. You just saw one car drive through there. That's because the waters have receded. But if you walk with me, I can show you all the mud that was left behind gives you some idea of just how big the puddle got. And that right over there is the culprit. That drain clogged up and the waters started rising. I tried to drive through the big puddle because I saw other cars doing it. Janelle Lum never made it to school, but learned a lesson anyway. My car just stopped. That's a good Samaritan carrying her from her flooded car at Oxnard and Lasane in Encino. Before he got to her, she'd been trapped for over an hour. I moved over to the passenger side because it wasn't flooding in there yet. And then it started flooding on the passenger side. And then I was just stuck with my feet like on the seat. Cell phone video shows just how many others made the same mistake. Crews used a raft to pull out drivers. Around the valley, so much flooding, so many rescues. Lum says she waited hours for a tow truck. They called me and said that they couldn't make it because the streets were blocked off and it was too flooded. In North Hollywood, a familiar scene. Ali Sagumian herself wrote, what a nightmare. She rolled on what she was seeing. Rising water, other trapped cars, wipers still going, and a lake in the middle of Vineland near Van Owen. The water was getting more and more, and my car just stopped. The entire water went inside my car. I literally felt like it was the ocean. <laughs> the drivers of these other cars may have felt the same. A dip in the road pooled the water and hid the danger. After two hours, all the cars, including Sagumians, were back on dryish land, even as they were towed out. It was still raining. I'm still very wet. This was just, I can't even believe this is happening in California. All the drivers we saw got out okay, but tell us they've learned a very valuable lesson. Next time they see a large puddle, they'll drive around it. Live in Encino, Christy Fajardo, CBS 2 News. Thanks, Christy. That's a good lesson to learn. And while those roads are back open, we do have news of some road closures. Stu Mandel is live in Sky 2 over Trabuco Canyon. Stu. 
That's right. We are actually on Chabuco, over Chabuco Canyon Road. A bridge is washed out out here on Chabuco Canyon Creek. It's very dark down there. You can see the Orange County Sheriff's basically making sure people know that they can't make their way by there. In the darkness down there, in the rain, you actually can see some of that road that has collapsed there. That's on. That's over Chabuco Canyon. That road is totally washed out. Sheriff's Department stopping people. They're taking Rose Canyon as an alternate right now. This is actually just at the foothills of the Holy Fire. So this is where a lot of that runoff from that fire is going to be making its way down that canyon, down to the ocean area. Right now, though, you can see the Sheriff's Department making sure everybody knows the bridge is out. Live in Sky 2 over the Dubuque Burn area. I'm Stu Mandel. Back to you two in the studio. Stu, thanks very much. A scary flight, at least the end of it, into Burbank thanks to the rain. The Southwest Airlines jet skidded off the runway, and look at how close it came to the street. Well, CBS 2's Dave Lopez is live at the Hollywood Burbank Airport, where passengers had a heck of a story to tell. Dave? I guess you could say, well, on my way to uh, Burbank today, uh, this happened. Over my shoulder, you can see that Southwest jet uh, that's going to be here quite a while. The FAA is looking over everything to make certain that this kind of thing cannot happen again. It was pouring rain. The pilot had told the passengers, hang on, this is going to be rough. From the air, you could see it was a close call. A Southwest airline, flight 278 from Oakland to Burbank, landed, skidded, and slid as it came to a stop. Right before touchdown, the pilot had warned the 112 passengers on board, be ready, this is gonna be a rough one. Just be prepared that this is gonna be a little bit different landing because of the short runway. He's kind of just letting people know, hey, we're gonna to have to get on the reverse thrusters a little heavy and that sort of thing. He wasn't kidding. So no, he wasn't kidding at all. The passengers then lit up social media about what happened next. The jet skidded and came to a stop in an area that is called the Engineered Material Arresting System designed so that planes don't go flying off the end of the runway and onto the street. He slammed on the brakes and we just kept on going. And then we came to a really fast stop, but nobody was hurt. Really kind of uneventful. It was more shocking coming off the plane. Despite the speed of the landing, the passenger said there was no panic. But I did not feel like we were going to stop. I'm looking over watching the actual airport go by at a very rapid pace, and I'm like thinking, timing in my head. From the air, you can see the skid marks the damage to the plane, and the wheels stuck in that material that's designed to stop the plane. Burbank is known for its short runway. And 18 years ago, a Southwest Airlines coming from Washington, D.C., couldn't stop, flew off the end of the runway, and crashed into the street. It stopped just short of this gas station that's no longer there. What happened today created a mess inside the Burbank terminal for passengers trying to get out on other Southwest flights. Cancellation? after cancellation. I mean, did you ever think the rain would cause this? Is that what happens? Is it an understandable situation? Oh, I think so. I mean, Burbank is kind of a unique airport in that the, um, the runway is so tight. Many people on flight 278 told me they fly this route often. It's like a commuter plane for them. And most of them took all this in stride. I've had worse landings. You're kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to know what was a rougher one than this. Uh, again, that plane hit about 140 miles an hour, which is normal, I am told by experts, when they hit the uh, runway. But the runway was so wet, so inundated with water that, uh, well, you know what it does to cars on the freeway? Now we know what it did to this jetliner trying to land at Burbank. Again, no injuries, a little unorthodox, but the people all applauded the pilot and said, thank you. Thank you for getting us here safe. Reporting live from Burbank, I'm Dave Lopez, CBS 2 News. Dave, thanks very much. And the rain does continue to come down. Our storm watch coverage continues next with a look at what happened today in the burn areas above Burbank. I'm Amy Johnson, live in the Malibu Park neighborhood that was hit hard by the fire, and now they're dealing with water. Heavy rain shut down several roads in the area. A live report coming up. And frozen in place up at the grapevine. The snow halted traffic today for hours. And we're still looking at snow and rain right now across the Southland with flash flood warnings still in place through this evening. I'll have your forecast ahead. You're watching live Storm Watch team coverage on CBS 2 News.